Hi friends, it's Leah Noel, ABA Trick Stitcher. Welcome. Whether you're a subscriber um, or brand new to my channel, thank you for being here. I'm so glad that you're here to spend time with me today. Um, this is a place where I talk about my cross stitching, mostly. And yeah, so um, I did not make good on my goal to film every two weeks. November got away from me just a little bit. Um, this past semester has been really hard. Um, I'm in I'm in flight school for those of you who don't know. Um, so yeah, this semester the classes I were I was taking um, were just really challenging on a personal level. Uh, they were just a little bit more technical than, uh, you know, I, I'm just, I, I've never really been exposed to um, technical things. Like, I've never taken a shop class or anything like that. But one of my classes this semester was um, a class on aviation systems. So I learned about um, hydraulic systems, how the engine works, um, fuel systems, electrical systems. I know a lot about oil <laughs> and machine parts and how they work. Uh, <laughs> so I started filming these videos um, after I was already a flight student. Um, so all you know of me is that I'm a pilot and this is what I do, but, um, if you had known me before flight school, I think you would kind of be chuckling with me right now just because, um, I've really always been more artistic, you know, into languages, um, into the humanities kind of fields. And so here I am taking this very um, technical course and I'm going to be getting a, a Bachelor of Science out of this. Um, I already have a Bachelor of Arts, but anyway, it's just, um, yeah, this is just challenging my skill set and um, it's really fun though. I'm I'm really having a good time. So So anyway, things are things are good now. Um classes are over. This is my first cup of coffee today. Um also this is like the seventh time I've tried um filming. So I'm just hoping for the best at this point that I can just keep filming and I'm sure all of you have been there where you're like, nope, <laughs> cut. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, this is my first cup of coffee, so I'm not quite all there yet today, um, but I'm trying. So back to my update, um, just giving you a little bit of a life update, I guess. Um, so November was a little bit rotten uh, the whole month. It just was not the best month for me. <laughs> uh, school was really hard. Um, my son was turning three. Well, he turned three on December 1st. So um, he's into this new stage, um, just kind of pushing every button, finding new buttons to push. Boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. Uh, and, and then, so things, oh, so I didn't fly at all in November because the weather, between, between the weather not being good, um, not having a babysitter, um, and 
I think there was some illness in there. I'm trying to remember. It was a long month. Anyway, I got zero flying done. So, I'm behind on my flying. So, yes, my classes are done for the semester, but my flying is not done. And um, so I'm, I'm learning at a traditional university. So I have traditional classes in the buildings, you know, per semester, every semester I've got classes. But then I have to fly to learn how to fly. So the flying portion of my flight school is considered a lab and it doesn't necessarily coordinate with your semester, your school semester, your, yeah, your traditional school semester. Because learning at a university is not the traditional way to learn how to fly. Um, so, yeah, so I still have to get some flying done. And to be honest, I don't think I'm going to finish before next semester. But it's okay. Um, I've been considering going to part-time next semester just because I have so many things on my plate right now. Um, not everything, I don't share everything here on my videos, but um, I just have some, some things that are time consuming that I have to do and I just was not able to do any of it this last semester. So yeah. Going forward into spring semester, I think I'm going to be doing only three quarters time at school instead of full time, which will give me a lot more freedom to get the stuff done that I need to get done. But also, I think I will have a lot more um, reliable time to make videos um, and to stitch. So. I think it's going to be good um, because this last semester not being able to stitch at all was um, it, it was like not having an outlet, you know, no way to de-stress. And we all need to de-stress, you know. I, I mean, that's just it's a requirement if you don't want to go crazy. So so that is it I guess for my for my update my life update um except well yeah Thanksgiving so Thanksgiving here was not I mean not super eventful we didn't um my husband had to work over Thanksgiving so it was just me and my son and we're far away from family so we could not and I wasn't done with my flying so I couldn't drive home to visit family it's like six hours or more with a toddler and a dog by myself so um so we just stayed here and thankfully i i have a friend here who invited me to his house to spend thanksgiving with his wife and himself and his son um so that was nice you know we we had a place to go we had a nice meal and we spent some really nice quality time with some friends so you know that that made things a lot better um but really, you know, Thanksgiving, I had a lot, I just had a lot on my plate and a lot going on. But this year, I really, I really strongly felt very thankful for all of you. Truly. Um, Floss Tube and all of you Stitchers are wonderful, wonderful people. And I have made friends that I know I'm going to be friends with for the rest of my life uh, and that is spectacular um and so I just wanted to say because I wasn't able to make a video around Thanksgiving I just wanted to say thank you so much for being in my life and for watching my videos for commenting for subscribing for making videos if you're making videos for having a presence on Instagram. I'm on Instagram too. Um, just the whole, the whole experience has been so good. Just great. So thank you. Um, oh, and right around Thanksgiving, speaking of wonderful stitching friends, Jenny Long Dog Stitcher sent me this 
beautiful pillow. I love it so much. It says, in everything give thanks. And she hand sewed this pillow. And I have been displaying it since I received it. Because this is actually the first pillow that I own. I don't own any other stitched pillows. I love it. It's so, so nice. So I put it up here with my gourds. <laughs> I love gourds. I went out and I got like a whole bunch of gourds. I love gourds. Look at that. So. So thank you, Jenny. And then, uh, I don't know, last week, week before, sometime, I got a little card in the mail from my friend Amy. Thank you, Amy. That's so sweet. And she sent along some Christmassy green DMC floss. And yes, I will use that. Thank you. That was so sweet. Amy, I've been thinking that I might put a little toad in my Adam's Menagerie in your honor. So I've been thinking about that, about where to put it. But I don't have a, I don't have a pattern yet for toads, but we'll see. You know, I'll figure something out. But I'm getting ahead of myself, I think. Um, I blame not enough coffee, so I'm just gonna keep drinking. Okay, so before I go into the actual stitching stuff, I wanted to do a, stop, a spotlight mention for the Sunshine Stitchers. Now, <laughs> the Sunshine Stitchers are a new floss tube group that um, they are making videos together. Um, EJ and Shelia and Gary um, I, I had got to know EJ a little bit through Instagram. Um, she had not been making videos until, um, until recently. So up until then, um, yeah, I just knew her through Instagram. Um, and so it was really, it was really fun to see that they had started a new floss tube group and they're really fun to watch. Um, I think they've almost got a thousand subscribers already in they have not been making videos for very long. So um, I'm super behind on on watching your videos. Um, but I will catch up. I will. I will do it. <laughs> I'm getting around. I'm getting around to, you know, all the people that I subscribe to. Uh, it's It's been, you know, it's been tough to keep up with everything but anyways I just wanted to say um check them out I will put a link to their account below in the comments so you can you can check them out and I think that's that's all I have before I get into my actual stitching so um to catch you up with what I've been stitching on, I'm going to go month by month. Okay, so all of November, um, I worked on one piece. With the exception of, I allowed myself three days, I think, three days to stitch two other pieces. So total, I only, had, I only got to three things in November. Um, but that's because I had a deadline and... I made it and I finished it and I actually um, FFO'd this gift. Um, it is called Kids with Wagon and I made this for my daycare provider. And this is a chart by Artisy, um, but I added the words myself. And um, the quote says that, um, let's see, children are a great way to start people. And 
I cannot take credit for that quote, but I don't know who to credit, so um, I just, I think it turned out exactly the way I envisioned. Um, I charted this myself. <laughs> um, I wanted it to look like the way children write. And it uh, it did. I think it I think it turned out to look just like children, right? You know, um, it's hard though. Have you recently tried to write the way children write? <laughs> it is harder than it looks. Oh my goodness. Um, it took me a while to chart the words. Um, what I ended up doing is I googled, I googled alphabet, like children, children handwriting alphabet or something, something along those lines, just to see if there was something that I could go off of. And there was. So I, actually there was like only one. It had uppercase and lowercase. So, um, I, yeah, let me show you again. So what I did is from, from that, from that chart that I found, not chart, but you know, like just handwrite from that handwriting that I found online, I just noticed some peculiarities about the way, the way the letters were written. Um, The A's are very, like, like a circle, you know, like a circle and then a stick. And then the T's are um, equal lengths. So equal lengths up and down and equal lengths across. Um, and I think that the T's especially give a good sense of children, you know, children's handwriting. And then another thing is that children don't don't always stick to the line so it's a little bit uneven um which is sort of hard to do but also keep it balanced you know um and then i wanted to kind of squish some of these letters here so um i i do i am aware that this a is very very close to this word but you know, kids tend to squish their their letters together, and it ended up being a little closer than I anticipated, but then I just thought, well, kids write that way, though, you know? Um, and, like, the Y goes a little bit above the A, and the, the P, the lowercase P is almost as tall, you know, like, it doesn't it doesn't dip under the line very much it kind of is even with all the other ones so anyway it just it was just little subtleties I think that that I tried to convey to give it a more childish uh, feel so I think she's gonna like this this is um, just DMC and um, let's see chart by artisy it's called kids with wagon and, um, yeah, none of that is, none of that is on the chart though. And then, so that's part of the reason I wanted to film today because I actually plan to gift these tomorrow. Um, and this is the other one that I did and you've seen this before, but, um, I just wanted to show you cause they're kind of a set. So this is the other one that I did for the other daycare provider. Um, there's two of them there. She's, uh. Their um, mother and daughter team that do an in-home daycare. So this is for the daughter, and the other one was for uh, the mother. But I think that she's gonna like it. I tried to go with like color themes that I knew sort of fit their personalities, and um, you know, tried to get the a fitting a fitting design for for each one of them so I'm really happy with how they turned out so I'm I'm excited to gift them tomorrow and
yeah, we'll see how that goes. So <clears throat> that was all of November, basically, is just finishing, finishing um, Kids with Wagon. Um, there was one day where I took it out to work on it and I said, no, I can't do it today. I can't. So I took out my Amy Mitten. This is Missing Persons number 1018. This is what it will look like. <clears throat> and I had next to no time to work on this, so I really didn't. I didn't even get to put in a whole length like I usually try to, but um, right here I just added a few bricks. I'm, I think I had this bottom portion done already, so I just added the bricks there. That's it. I love Amy Mitten. Um, just, she's so clever in her designing. Um, I think that's what I love most about her, is just her cleverness. <clears throat> okay. And then the other thing that I worked on in November was this funny turkey. <laughs> now, I had dreams to do this in one glorious day. But I did not get that um, luxury. But I got a good start. And I probably won't take this out again until next Thanksgiving. But that's okay because now I have a turkey thing to work on for next Thanksgiving. Um, I thought I, I was going to start in the middle. Um, I was going to start in the middle of this. But then... I looked at the design and I did some counting and I was like, I can still use like half of this fabric if I just put it towards the bottom. So there it is. So that's done. And no, nope, I did one more thing in, in November. I did one more thing in November. I did Max's Moon. Um, Max's Moon is a, uh, Lucilla kit that we are, that I am doing with Becca, Stitching Becca, and we're doing this together as a stitch along because we both had the kit and we had both had it for like years and we both spoke about it, um, in our videos as, yeah, we have this in our stash, we want to do it someday, and I was like, let's do it together. So it's great to have that accountability, and um, and I, I think Becca's a faster stitcher than I am, because it's like, it seems like she just sits down and bam, she's done with her section, and it takes me days, like weeks even, to finish my sections. But anyways, we finished the moon in the summer, we finished the leaves, in the autumn and I don't remember if the last time I showed you if those were done or not but I'll show you in a minute so for the winter we're going to stitch this section down here and then in the spring we'll stitch this stump and then whenever we feel like we have time we will stitch max so I finished the leaves uh, last month and this month I had time to start on the other section and let me see if I can I don't know if I can adjust this to sorry I'm not prepared anyway um I'll just okay all right you're not going to be able to see all of it the leaf but you can see more of it now um so I decided to stitch some of Max because I had a little bit of time and just behind it. So the, the moon is done and the leaves are done. You can sort of see, yeah, sorry, I'm not, I'm just not going to unroll it. But 
started this part and now here's the ground so so technically I have three borders done actually I've touched three sides I've touched the top um, this side over here and now the bottom so I will be working on this side and then I will have touched all four sides I think yeah so it's really cute I think um, I think if I had thought of this um, earlier, I might have switched out the fabric to be a 16 count black Ada instead of a 14 count. I think this is 14 count. Yeah, this is 14 count. I'm finding um, so I've been I've been experimenting with different types of fabrics, different counts, all that, you know, all that good stuff over the last year. I've, I've just done, it's been like an experimental year. Just, I'm trying to stitch all the things and I'm doing all the things and I'm just getting my hands in everything. And it's so much fun. Um, so I think I have sort of settled into my favorite Stitch count being 32 or 16. Um, I do still prefer 28 over 36, though. Um, I don't know. I think. So that's a, that's a thought in progress there. Uh, so that's Max's moon. Um, and I did work on him in December. Now, let's see, what else did I do in December? December, I had a ton of studying to do, and every time I went to study, I would bring my, I would bring this. My Polar Bears, it's a Mill Hill kit on perforated paper, and um, I am doing this extreme cross country, and I started with white. And I finally finished all of the white and I started to add some ecru. I think when I made this decision to do extreme cross country, I decided to start with white because you should always start with white just because when you, when you stitch white next to a darker color, the white, when you pull the white through, it can pick up tiny fibers of the colorful floss and make your white not as white anymore. So I think that was sort of my intention when I started doing this extreme cross country, starting with white. But this is almost all <laughs> white and off-white and shades of white. These flosses are mostly white. There's a few dark ones in here, like this dark blue and there is a little bit of black here, but um, in general, I mean, these are all very light. So I don't think I had to put, I don't think I had to do that to myself, but I did. Anyway, a note on the perforated paper. I don't mind it. Um, if you have been watching my videos for a while, um, you might remember that I was a little apprehensive about about using perforated paper because you can't put it in a frame and you can't stitch two-handed. I mean, you can if you... I've seen some people um, attach fabric to the sides here and then put the fabric in a Q-snap, which is really very smart, but... I don't have the skill set at this point to do that. <laughs> so, um, this is this has got like a number of days already in December, because when I study, when I study, I always like to do. 50 minutes of studying, 10 minutes of break. Um, that way it gives your brain a chance to rest and for the information to just kind of sink in. Um, 
and uh, so when I when I'm on my 10 minute study breaks I take out the cross stitching okay now what else did I do I have worked a lot a lot a lot on folk Santa now this this is folk Santa um, this is my first major color conversion I am changing all the yellow to blue and that is quite a feat because you'll notice that it's almost all yellow and there are so many shades of yellow um, some some of the yellow some of the yellow uh, sort of becomes orange and some of the yellow becomes brown so when I was looking at all of this yellow um, all of these you know shades of yellow I really had to think about okay you know if it's if it's yellow orange then I would want a blue purple you know um, and if it was a brown I really had to just kind of look at it like okay what what shade of brown is this because brown is a mix of all three primary colors right red yellow blue so you have to kind of look at your brown and say which color is coming through the most is this a yellow brown red brown or a blue brown so anyway um not that it really matters for what I'm going to show you because I have not got to that part yet I have a little bit up in here um, so I I did start the tree actually the um, the green parts on the tree are done now and I got this little bird done and I also decided to do my back stitching as I go which yes that is the way to go um, I don't know why I haven't been doing that uh, uh, up until now because back stitching as you go it's like a little mini finish look at that little bird it's like wow that's a little bird and now I can enjoy that little bird um, and the tree actually has no back stitching on it it in the pattern doesn't have back stitching the pole and the ribbon will have back stitching so I'll be doing that I think um, I haven't really decided what I'm gonna do if I'm gonna start doing this ribbon now or if I'm gonna start on the mitten there's a mitten here or he's got a hat here and a face um, I know that when Sarah the stitching mommy when she does all of her ladies she likes to make her way to the face as soon as possible so she can like get the face done and then as she's stitching on the rest of the lady she can just you know admire the face and feel like you know she's there and you know that sort of thing so I, I kind of like that idea and I'm sort of leaning towards you know moving up here and um, doing the the hat and the face and the white beard before I get into this ribbon so yeah um yeah I, I am really really liking this blue the whole the whole um, collection of flosses are just really really more my palette I don't know yeah I'm gonna show you some other time but um there's a lot of blues and purples now and blues blue blue purple green and red are really like my color palette that's what I decorate my house in um, red pink you know like like a like a warm like a warm red so anyway it's it's really fun like I I'm just I'm feeling really good about this color conversion and it's it's coming out really nicely I think so I'm excited about that okay um the last thing the last thing I've worked on this month 
is Jumpin' Jack Frost because I all throughout the entire month of November I just kept looking at Jumpin' Jack Frost and I was like I really want to work on you and I couldn't because I was busy working on that gift so that gift was over this was like I think the second thing that I pulled out Anyway, so Jumbo Jack Frost, Tempting Tangles. I I don't really do yellow, so <clears throat> I'm using this gorgeous green fabric by Witchelt. It is Time. It's a 28 count uh, Joblin in Time. And I love the coloration. I really, really love the model look. It's, it's not, it's not what I was thinking of when I was fabric shopping. But I am so glad that I, I found this one because I think it's perfect for, for this design. So, um, you've already seen all the letters, um, finished. I did add the period at the end. And I started in on his jacket and a couple leaves. Um, I'm not using all of the called four colors because um, I don't. I, yeah, I don't. I don't. Tempting Tangles colors are usually not my color palette, so I um, have changed some of them, but. This is, this is charted for Crescent Colors, which is now Color Work, Color Work, what is it? Classic Color Works. Yeah, Classic Color Works. Um, I did, I did get some of the Classic Color Works, um, because some of them I didn't think I was going to be able to substitute, but, um, so the ones that I got are the the yellow for his pants and the it's like a it's like a yellow and orange for his skin. There's a I'll show you. I have it right here. Candy corn. So this this is actually the color that she charted for his skin. Um she said to fold fold it in half and use I think did she say fold it in half or she said to just use the orangey part anyway I haven't got to the skin part so I haven't figured that that out yet I'm not really sure exactly what I'm gonna do for the skin tone if you have a favorite skin tone DMC color uh, let me know in the comments because I am still experimenting with skin tone uh, flosses and I do have like if you've been watching my videos you know um, you know of my Adam's Menagerie project that one has Adam in it um, and I still haven't done his his body I have an idea of what I want to do for him he, he's gonna have more of an olivey skin tone but Jumpin' Jack Frost I don't know. I feel like I feel like it should be sort of pale, right? Excuse me. Like I don't know. This is gonna be kind of orangey, the way the way it's charted with this. Um, it's like orange. It's like orange and yellow, and she wants. I just don't know. If you have a good suggestion, like I'm all ears. I would really like to. I would really like to figure that out. I mean, Jack Frost should probably be more pale, right? But I don't want him to look dead. In the in the in the um, model, he's got rosy cheeks, which I think is really cute. I might just try to keep the rosy cheeks, just because. I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna have to think about that at another time. But yeah, your favorite skin tones, 
Um, it doesn't matter. I like, um, I actually really like to stitch diversity, so if you have any skin tones that you're like, yeah, this is the perfect skin tone, like, yeah. Let me know. Okay. So, Jumpin' Jack Frost, Max's Moon, Kids with Wig and Polar Bears, Folk Santa, that's it. That's all I have stitched since I have filmed last. So, um, I have a tiny bit of haul, not a lot. I've been really good. Um, yeah, I've been really good with my haul. But also I asked for a lot of cross-stitching stuff for Christmas. So, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. What do I get? Um, Hmm. Okay, so, haul. I really wanted to get something from the Kitten Stitcher's website um, because I have not yet been a customer on her website and I really like her, like, as a person. She's, she's wonderful, right? Um, and I really, I really wanted to um, get something from her website at some point because um because I wanted to support her business and and um she has some quirky things I um I think I'm a huge fan of carriage house samplings uh, I have not stitched anything yet from uh from that designer but Kathy Barrick I'm pretty sure um, but I, in my last video I showed Be My Love, that's Carriage House Samplings. I'm super excited to stitch that, probably in the spring, springish. And, um, and then I, I found this other chart. Okay, this was actually, this is what came with what I went to her website to, to buy. So I'll just show you, since I'm talking about it now, we're going out of order, it's fine. So Molly, Carriage House Samplings, I am definitely going to change the color palette, but I just thought, um, I just think it's really funny, charming, um, I'm not really sure, but it sort of reminds me of me, like, I'm going to change these, some things about this, about this design. To be more like reflective of me. This cat, for instance, I'm going to make into my cat Dudley. We, uh, my, my cat is a Berman, so I'm gonna change the coloration to be that. Um, her dress, I might actually keep the dress as is. I might make it like the a really dark purple. Like, uh, what's that color? DNC, like 154 or 150. One, 150 and I don't remember now sorry I don't remember which which one that is but <clears throat> I'm going to um, I'm going to change these numbers to a different language so that these are these are Arabic Arabic numerals I'm pretty sure they're called Arabic numerals. Right? Isn't that what we call them? Anyway, I'm going to change them to another language. And then, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to change cat. I might put like, eh, I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do there. If I'm gonna keep cat, or if I'm just gonna put some other word, or, hmm. Well, now I'm thinking out loud. Sorry, that was unplanned. Um, so, what I actually went to Kitten Stitcher's website for was this pattern, Antique Locks and Keys. Um, ever since she showed this, 
it has sort of stayed in the back of my mind. Like, all right, I kind of like that. I'm not super into keys. Like, I know keys are sort of a, um, they're sort of a popular theme. People collect keys and they wear key necklaces and that kind of thing. I'm not necessarily into, like, keys in that sort of way. But, um... I was thinking about the secret of Nim again. I know, here I go. I've already got the ring. Okay, on the back side of the stone, it has a saying. It says, you can unlock any door if you only have the key. And I was thinking that I could use this pattern and add that quote. And I think I can put this on my, um, Hand, by, hand dyed by Rolanda fabric. Um, I forgot to bring it out with me, but it's it's that beautiful um, purple and orange um, variegated fabric um, that I got from Charlene. And I just think that this will look really good on that. And then also with that quote, I think that'll be really nice. So, so I got this with that intention don't know when I'm gonna start that and I also don't know what floss I'm gonna use but there's time and then um, Teresa always sends along some ink or floss with her orders um, I know this from other floss tubers not from personal experience so you know I got this I was like oh there's my ink or floss <laughs> so anyway um, this is this is like a nice mustard yellow. Um, it should be very it should be very useful and I might even use it for the the sun up there. So we'll see. Just thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. Okay. So that was my haul. That was it. So I did good I did a good job. Um I'm trying to decide if I want to talk about my plans or July and Christmas. They sort of go together, don't they? Um, I think I'll talk about my plans. So going forward, um, it's almost Christmas. How did that happen? I don't even know. I think it was maybe yesterday or the day before. Um, did I, I think I received some, a Christmas card in the mail or something. And I was like, oh man, they're really on the ball. This is so early. And then I thought, wait a second. Christmas is next week. And I have not sent out any of my gifts. Like, ugh, bad Leah. I do this all the time. All the time. I'm so bad at getting stuff in the mail. Why am I so bad at getting stuff in the mail? I don't know. I don't know. So, anyways, um, where was I going with that? It's Christmas. Oh, plans. Okay, Christmas plans. <clears throat> Christmas stitching. So, Christmas stitching, yes. You've already seen all this stuff that I've already been stitching on for Christmas stitching. So I'm just going to continue working on those. But also, I am hoping to get to this one again. This is a long stitch. Um, this is an, an anchor long stitch kit. Uh, winter through the window. Sorry, it's all tangled. I'm just trying to get myself together here. Come on, Leah. There. Okay. So, <clears throat> last year, around Christmas time, I started this long stitch kit. Um, and Stephanie, someone who watches my videos and comments regularly, uh, said that she wanted to stitch this too. And so when I was ready to start stitching it, I reached out to her and I was like, hey, you want to start it with me? She was like, yeah. So... She also started this, 
but she is familiar with long stitch like she does long stitch um, and this is my first long stitch ever so it's kind of taking me a little bit longer to get the hang of it um, but I think it's so pretty I just I mean okay give me all the cats I just love cats if I wasn't married I would probably have more cats okay anyway so this is coming up and I will show you where I am it's not very far it comes with a printed canvas um, but it's sort of stamped on here and it's not stamped evenly so that's part of why I stopped last year because I was like, I don't know, I was just getting a little bit unsure, you know, about how this was panning out. Because the, this was not, this was not hand painted. I've since learned that um, needlework is often hand painted onto the canvas, you know, the pattern is hand painted on the can onto the canvas, which is why it's so expensive. Super expensive. Um, but this one was not expensive. Um, but it's because they just go, you know, they don't really, they don't really care if your lines are going this way and the pattern just kind of goes on this way. So if you, um, if you are like me and you want to try all the things and you're like, oh yeah, long stitch kits, that's a good idea. I should try that. Um, Stephanie sent me a really, really helpful uh, document that gives some helpful tips and the most helpful tip that she gave me was you should always try to come up through an area where you haven't stitched and go down on an area that you have already stitched. Does that make sense? So I started at the top so I'm going to go from top to bottom but you'll see my thread came out down here, no, anyway, yes, my thread came out down here and I will put it in up here and it just makes it nicer. That is my coffee pot, I forgot to turn it off. Um, so that's the most helpful tip. And other than that, I don't have any other helpful tips because I think I'm still learning how to be good at this. Really, I could just use more helpful tips. <laughs> but I have that document. I mean, it's really, it's a helpful, it's a super helpful document. Anyway, um, that's coming out probably Christmassy. That's Christmassy. Um... Oh, and the other, the last Christmas thing that I'm going to work on is a new start. Now you may remember that I have a stocking for myself. Um, it's Candy Cane Santa. It's a Dimensions Gold kit. Um, and I love it. And it is coming out really great. And it is very slow going. Um, these Dimension kits are just really um there's so many so many color changes and full cross half cross um you know one strand two strand up to five strands um and then back stitching it's just this whole big thing right it's very intensive stitching so it's very slow going um but i'm just kind of chipping away at it when i can except for i have this kit now 
This is, which, which one is this? Snowman and Friends Stocking. It is another gold collection, Dimensions Gold Collection. And um, so I bought this for my son, who is three. He just had his third birthday. Uh, let's see. And uh, I was so tempted to just try to finish my stocking first because it's fairly close to being done. I'd say it's probably two thirds finished. Um, if I'm also including the back stitching and not the finishing, like the fully finishing, if I'm not considering that, then it's probably about two thirds done. And I, and I just thought, you know, I like that one more. That's why it's mine. It's for me. I'm going to put my name on it. But my son is three and I want him to have more time with his stocking. And I knew that's what I should do. But I didn't want to do it, so I asked Instagram, but, you know, my friends on Instagram agreed with what I knew I should do, which is start this one. I'm just going to start this one, and I'm going to put mine on the back burner because I really want my son to grow up with memories of his own stocking, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to start this and, um, well, this is, this is sort of getting into plans now, I guess, my long-term plans. Um, <clears throat> so I want to finish this by next Christmas. And I don't know if that's feasible. I don't, I, it might be a little unrealistic because these are so these are so intensive, but I don't know. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Um, I'm considering doing something like stocking Sundays, like to make sure that I work on it at least once a week. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm considering doing something like that. Um, actually stitching Becca, who I'm doing the uh, Max's moon stitch along with uh, she also just recently got some stockings for her kids and she also wants to finish one by next Christmas so we're sort of thinking about doing another sort of stitch along together which I think uh, you know it's nice to have someone doing something with you I, I mean that's like the point of stitch alongs right is to know that people are out there doing the same thing like you're helping each other stay motivated and everything. So, so do you have a stocking that you want to finish by Christmas next year? And would you be interested in doing something like Stocking Sunday? Because that would be fun, right? That would be fun. Okay. Um. So that's like one of my New Year's resolutions, I think, is to, to finish that stocking by Christmas. At least, I, I think I'm not going to, I'm not going to pressure myself into having it FFO'd by Christmas time, because that might be putting it a little bit too, you know, a little too much pressure to get it done. But that's what I'm thinking anyway. Again, thinking, thinking out loud. Not enough coffee. I really. I can't, I can't film in, in the mornings anymore, I don't think it's, this is like an hour, we're about an hour in, and I'm just talking about who knows what sometimes. There goes my coffee. Okay. More plans. More plans. Max's moon. I've already talked about that, so that's in my plans. Um, all right, I have a new start that's, um, okay. Gifts, okay. Going into the new year, I am going to try to not have so many gifts going on at the same time. It feels 
it feels like, excuse me, I, it feels like I had a lot of gifts going on all at the same time. And I didn't really like that very much, at least towards the end of the year, because I just felt like, I don't know, like I wasn't able to concentrate on things that I actually wanted to stitch for myself as much. So, um, going into next year, I'm going to try to kind of tier, not tier, um, sequence. I'm going to try to sequence my gifts. Um, first things first, I'm going to finish this. Um, this is my red workhouse and you've all, you've seen this before, it's, so I'm not going to take it out. Um, but I'm, I'm super close to finishing this, so I'm like, all I have to do is this bottom row. And I have not touched this since I showed it in I don't know how many videos ago. Like, I have not worked on this in months and months. So I miss it, and I'm going to finish it. Like, this is my number one priority for gift finishing. I'm going to finish this one. This is for my mom, and she knows that I'm stitching it for her, so... Um, so, you know, fine. Um, I have another gift that I'm, I don't really, I don't feel pressured to finish this gift. It's, um, it's a gift that I'm doing for my friend Sarah Lambert and it's a mystery for her. It's not a mystery stitch like I, like I know what the design is and a lot of you have probably seen the design, uh, just from being aware that there are cross stitch designs out there and you look through them sometimes <clears throat> but she doesn't know what this design is so I'm calling it a mystery stitch um that one I I just I don't really feel super pressured into finishing it in a timely manner because it's a just because gift and also I'm sort of um, using it as an experiment for myself, for experimenting with different types of flosses. And um, that part has been really fun so far for me. Uh, and then I give her just a, like a little snippet of progress when I'm totally done with something. Um, so like a part of it. So <clears throat> that is sort of like an ongoing one, but it's fine. Like, that one I just don't feel, it, it doesn't, it doesn't give me pressure, you know, pressure to finish. So, my point is, that one is sort of out of sequence. Like, I'm just going to keep working on that whenever I feel like working on that. Like I do with most of my other stuff. But gifts, so, Red Workhouse, I'm going to finish that. I'm going to finish that. Then, once I'm done with that, I'm going to start a new, a new um, design for my youngest sister. I have two sisters and one brother, and at some point they're all going to get gifts. And maybe my dad too, but he'll probably be last on the priority just because I don't know what he would like or if he would like anything, you know? Like, there's just some people who... You, where would he put it and what would he do with it, you know? He's more of a practical kind of guy, you know? He likes... He likes tools and machines and... I don't really want to stitch tools and machines and I don't think he would like to look at stitched tools and machines. Okay, getting totally off track. Anyways, so one of my sisters... The youngest one. Um, the the only challenge with finding a design for her was which one out of these hundreds that I think she would like. Um, with my other sister, it's a little different because she, you know, I've I've mentioned before. I was like, hey, I'm gonna stitch something for you at some point. She's like, oh, what am I gonna do with it? Like. <laughs> She, 
I'm going to find something that she likes. And I know there's something out there that she's going to like. And that's fine. But anyways, so my youngest sister. I'm finally going to stitch something out of this book. Now this book I got from the Stitching Mommy, Sarah the Stitching Mommy. Um, she she did a giveaway like last year. I was just starting to get into floss tube and I was just starting to um, learn about kitting up your own designs. Like prior to that I had only been doing dimensions kits because that's all I thought was out there. <clears throat> And so I was just getting into floss tube and I had just put this on my wish list on my Amazon wish list and she was doing a giveaway and I was like, wow, you know, this floss tube thing is so cool. Like people just give things away. And then I won and I was like, wow, I won that. And then it came in the mail and I was like, wow, this is real. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Um... So I got this like a year ago and I haven't stitched anything from it yet and um, I think it's just because I've been so distracted with all of these other things like I'm just experimenting like crazy right um oh actually I think it's the one on the cover no it's not okay so my sister my youngest sister I had her look through lots and lots of designs and I was like tell me what you like and she picked this and this is actually exactly what I thought, like, I thought, oh, she's going to like this one. Like, maybe I should just stitch this, like, I should just get this, start stitching it for her and tell her I'm doing it. But then I decided, no, I'm just going to give her the option like I did for my mom. You know, make her part of the process, like, see what she really likes and that sort of thing. So, gave her all these options and then she chose this one. And I knew it. I knew it. So... I'm gonna stitch this for her. Um, as soon as I'm done with Redwork House, I'm going to start stitching this. Um, it's a little bit more involved than I was hoping for. Um, it's just gonna take a long time, but I told her that, I, I was like, you know, don't expect this like right away because it's gonna take a while. And she was totally fine with that. And um, so this, but that's not all. I decided to use my fabric from Misty, Luminous Fiber Arts. In my last, I think my last video, I, I, I showed this fabric, this gorgeous fabric. It's called Midnight. Um, now, look. Don't you think that's going to look amazing on this fabric? I think it's going to be dreamy. So, I'm very excited to start this, but um, that'll be sometime. That'll be sometime next year after I'm done with Redwork House, and so she knows that it's coming. She's excited. Also, she thought she thought the same thing I thought. Like, wow, yeah, that's gonna look great on that fabric. So I'm very very happy about that. And I'll finally get to use that nice gift from Sarah. And, okay. So, um, that is, that wraps up the gift plans. Okay, now I have some other plans in the works. In 2019, I am going to start my very first shadowing. A while ago, say six months ago, maybe, I um, I found a shadowing design that I wanted the most um, on clearance. Um, on Etsy. I believe the store is called Cottage Needle. 
I'll link it below. I've ordered from her before and um yeah I really I really like her her Etsy store. She's got some really good products and um, she always sends a free like a free chart and a needle so anyway um so I decided on the dragonfly lace mandala look at this oh. so this this project I decided um, they're they're really expensive like even the charts are very expensive right like they're um, I think they're like $40 just for the chart um, so when I saw this on clearance I think it was 50% off or something I just thought I think it's meant to be I think I have to I think I have to just dive in and go for it so I bought it um, and then I I didn't I didn't buy a kit or anything like I didn't I didn't buy there's some there's some website some European a lot of you know what it's called it's like European something or other <clears throat> I looked on that website I looked at the kit I looked at the kit contents and I just decided I think I'm going to kit this up myself because it's going to cost about the same but if I have leftover materials then I have leftover materials whereas in the kit I think you get just what you need you might have like a little bit extra floss but I don't know I just thought it, it was pretty much the same price to kit it all up myself than to buy the kit done for me um, uh, and I also thought that if I kit it up myself, I can just piecemeal um, and buy like buy materials as I need them as I go instead of paying for everything all at once, which is going to cost a lot of money. So um, Christmas is coming up, as I mentioned, and I asked for all of the materials that I need. Um, I'm still not decided on the fabric though. And... Um, yeah, I'm waffling. I'm waffling on two different ideas and um yeah, I'm just not I'm not totally I'm not totally sure on what I'm doing for the fabric, but I actually um I reached out to Mev, Mev Stitches in Paris to help me and uh she she and I are putting our brains together and we are mulling over, you know, just colors and different concepts and um, it's just so nice to be able to find people that you connect with on an artistic level and um, I just I hope everyone is sort of connecting that way um, so anyways I I am starting this in the summertime I'm not starting this like right away but the reason I decided to tell you about it now is in case someone wants to stitch a chatelaine with me like to start it at the same time and be like yeah I'm starting the chatelaine too or even like if you wanted to stitch if you wanted to do this one the dragon dragonfly lace mandala it's really gorgeous um so I don't know I just thought I would plant the idea and if anyone was like yeah that's an awesome idea then we can start together in the summertime I don't know when probably May probably May just let me know um okay now lastly I want to talk about July and Christmas July in Christmas um, Christmas stitching is awesome. Christmas is awesome. But once Christmas is over and the new year starts and winter starts to drag on and get really dreary and people just start to be 
over it. Like, ugh, I'm so over winter. Like, do you ever feel that way? I feel that way a lot. Um, I want to stitch some July and Christmas. Um, this is not like a hard and fast date, but generally I'm going to say July and Christmas in January. Um, because once your Christmas stitching is sort of like run its course and you're like, you're just ready for some flowers and sunshine, you can bring out your July stitching and stitch it in Christmas because we do Christmas in July, right? At least I did. I did Christmas in July this last year or well this year, this year. <laughs> and um, I don't know, it'll be fun. We'll do, we'll do July and Christmas. So my July and Christmas plans include very summery things and it's looking, I'm just looking for my, hmm. Okay, well, I don't see, sorry, I, I didn't bring the, the chart, so I can't show you the picture, but window and garden is going to come out. Let's see, which way does it go? This way. Window and garden, you're going to see this again. This is where I am now. Um, and then I'll be stitching this for July and Christmas. I mean, isn't this just so cheerful? I think it's so cheerful. July and, July and Christmas, and this is, okay. Window and Garden by Little Room in the Attic on Etsy. Um, what else am I going to do for July and Christmas? I am going to work on Scuba Duba by Raise the Roof Designs, or Design, whatever. Um, I'm not super far on this one, but, and I'm doing it super tiny. I'm doing it um, two over one half stitch on 28 count Monaco. That'll be fun. Maybe some summary. I am going to stitch on my seashells design. Um, this is actually a gift for my mother-in-law and goes this way. That's how far I am on that. So yes, this this will get sequenced at some point. I'm just not sure when. But that'll come out for July and Christmas. Um I would really like to start um, the B Sampler by Lila's Studio. I love Lila's Studio. I go to her Etsy site all the time and I'm like, oh, I should buy this. But then I see other patterns and I'm like, oh, I should buy this one. Oh, I should buy this one. Oh, I should buy this one. And then suddenly I should buy like 10 things. And then I say, I probably shouldn't buy any of them until I really decide what I really want to stitch. So I'll probably see, I'll probably get more Lila Studio in the, in the future. But this I got from um, Caitlin, the gal stitcher. And she even sent along with flosses, so. I want to I want to start this for July and Christmas. That's what I want to do. And then the last thing, no, probably not the last thing, but the last thing I'll show you. I want to start this. This is Harmony um, by Victoria Motto. Victoria Motto Sampler Shop. I won her giveaway um, a few months ago, and she sent me flosses also. And I wanted to start this in the fall, but as I went over already, it just, I didn't have time. So I really want to start this, but I mean, it's not really a fall piece. It's, and I don't, I don't know that it's very summery either, but.
but the color palette that I'm going to do is going to be um, like blues and greens. So I think that's sort of summary. It's summary enough that I'm going to be like, yeah, well, I'm going to maybe start this. So I really want to start this because I, I do really like this and I have not yet used those Victoria Moda Sampler Shop threads and I want to because they are so pretty and, and why not? Okay. I also might bring out my Patriotic Angel because um, July, that's my, that's my 4th of July piece that I work on. So I might do that. And then I also might start my Amy Mint in Guatemala kit. Um, but I don't know about that one. I might finish the Amy Mitten that I have going first before I start on Guatemala, but I don't know. I don't know about sequencing there either, you know? Anyway, I'm working on it. I'm thinking it out. So, um, yeah. I guess that's it about stitching. That's a long video this time, sorry. There's a lot to catch up on, and also my brain wasn't working very fast this morning. So anyway, um, yeah, New Year's is coming up. I won't, I won't be, um, filming before New Year's. So I want to say Merry Christmas to those of you who celebrate Christmas, um, and Happy New Year. And yeah, New Year's resolutions. Do you have any? Some of my resolutions, um, I, I always, I really like to make New Year's resolutions, but I, I actually don't settle on resolutions until like March. <laughs> like every year, it's pretty consistent. Uh, but I'm pretty good at keeping up with them. So at least there's that, you know, like I put a lot of thought into them. So I don't know. I'm trying to start a little bit early this year to think about my resolutions. Some things I'm thinking, you know, the stocking, I, I do want to make that a resolution. Like I want to finish that stocking by Christmas, my son's stocking by Christmas. He'll be four. Oh my goodness. Um, and then floss tube videos. I want to improve the quality of my floss tube videos over this next year. So, um, I'm going to try to do that. Um, I'm not sure about details on that yet, but that's just something I'm mulling over right now. How can I improve the quality of my floss tube videos? Um, and then, um, what else was there? There was something else. Reading. I always, I so I always make a reading list, a reading goal. Um, and I use the Goodreads app. Uh, this year I am considering doing something really crazy and joining Anne, um, Anne P. in her 52 books in a year. So that's basically one a week, which uh, I don't know. That might be, it might be stretching it for me, it really might be. But there is a Goodreads list um there's a goodreads group for 52 it's like okay what's it called around the year in 52 books and Anne just did one whole video on books um i can link it below if anyone's interested in just just books just book talk um and i briefly looked over the the reading list for 2019 um, it's basically categories where you you see the category and you pick a book that you want to read that goes into that category. Um, I'm not really sure yet if that's going to be right for me, but I want I think I want to do something like that. Like I'm I think I want to do something categorical for my reading my reading list next year. This year, in 2018, I had a goal to reach or to read 36 books, and I did that. But you know, I do, I do read easy books too. Like, um, I actually read cookbooks cover to cover. I read them like a book, um, because I enjoy cookbooks a lot. So I feel like those go pretty fast. Um, 
And then if I feel like, if I feel like I just need some easy victory, like some cheap victory, I will also read very short books. So I can say, oh, I read a whole book, you know. Um, so uh, it counts though, you know, like it doesn't not count. It's a, it's a whole book. So anyway, considering that for our New Year's resolutions, um, oh, yeah, there's, there's other things, there's other things that I'm considering for New Year's resolutions, but really that's, I think that's all I'll share for now. Maybe, maybe in my next video, if I have anything more solid, I'll share something more solid, but next semester starts a little bit early for us. It starts, um, first, the first full week in January, so it's, yeah, that's pretty early, but we also finished classes a little bit early too, like, the um, second week in December was finals week, so yeah, so it's okay. Anyway, I do believe I have come to an end. So thank you so much for for making it this far. It's an hour and a half, so <clears throat> hopefully you put me at two times speed or something. So you can move on to other stitchers, get your floss tubing in. Um, this time of year gets really busy for everybody, I think, you know, with the holidays and um, whether you celebrate Christmas or not, usually people gather together to be with their loved ones. So I just want to say thank you again so much for being here, for being in my life, for commenting below, for subscribing. Um, Thanks for sharing this journey with me and for um, enriching it, really. Like, really. Thank you so much. And I hope that you will subscribe if you haven't subscribed already so that we can spend time together like this more frequently. Um, in the new year, I hope to do videos about every two weeks, and I, I think I can do that. That is another resolution, so... Um, so yeah, leave a comment below and um, even just to say hi. And I'll see you again. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Bye, friends.